Hello and welcome back to the channel. Easter is upon us and it's a great time to figure out how to do some clickers. I got myself a pack of keyboard switches and it's time to put them to use. This was a difficult project that took quite a few attempts, but the end result is worth it. We got a lot to do, so let's get started. Here we are in Fusion and I've saved my file as always. We're going to start off the same as we usually do by creating a new sketch on the top plane. Then we'll import our SVG outline. We're going to size it up to about 45 millimeters. It'll be slightly larger than that since we're going to expand the outline to create the outer edge. Once we're satisfied with the size, let's click OK. You can see the SVG brought along some parts of the hearts which are outside the egg's edge. We're going to trim those off with the trim tool. Click on each curve that's outside of the egg and remove it. There's one stubborn one that won't go away because somehow Fusion doesn't think it's intersecting with the edge curve, but since it's not a closed loop, it won't matter in the end. Next, we're going to create the bands for the top pieces surrounding wall, the spacing between the top and bottom, and the bottom wall. Select the edge of the egg, then the offset tool, and we're going to offset by 1 millimeter. Next, offset again by 2 millimeters. This is for the spacing between the top wall and bottom wall. Now, it was during this next offset that I encountered an issue. I could not offset to the 3.5 millimeters that I wanted because Fusion refused to make the offset a part of the sketch. The most I could offset was 3.15, so that's what I went with. Next, we want to select the whole sketch and hit E for extrude. We want to make this initial piece 9.2 millimeters. Hit OK, and what we want to do next is hide the new body we just created. We then want to select the outermost ring and hit E for extrude. We want to make the height be 18 millimeters. This will give us our outer wall. Let's make the first body visible and check our base. Looks good so far. Now it's time to move on to the top piece. Before moving on, Let's tidy up here and rename our two bodies so that we're able to refer to them later. This will let us turn bodies on and off quickly to be able to do the next steps. Let's go ahead and hide those bodies so it's easier for us to see what we're doing. We're then going to select the top's main body, that is, the area width but not including the hearts. We're also going to select the outer wall loop. We're going to extrude those by 3 millimeters. We can then hide that new body and begin selecting our hearts. We're also going to be extruding these by 3 millimeters. Okay, let's check our work and make sure we got everything. Everything looks good, so let's get our outer wall extruded. One quick shortcut that comes in handy is the hide unhide key, which is V as in Victor. We can select all the bodies that we want to hide, and we want to just be left with the sketch visible. Now let's select the top half's wall loop. That's the inside one. We're going to extrude the wall to 8 millimeters. However, instead of creating a new body, let's make the main body visible again, and when we extrude, we're going to pick join instead. This will fuse the new extended wall with the existing body. That will make it one object when we go to the Bamboo Studio later on. Let's check everything to make sure it's what we need and go ahead and rename our top body piece so we know which one it is on the list. Finally, we can select everything and hide it all. We're now ready to begin working on the switch mechanism. Let's create a new sketch first. The strategy here is we're going to create a square that we'll use to extrude to create a hole in the bottom piece. We'll line it all up so that the bottom hole will line up perfectly 
with the top hook that goes over the switch mechanism. The top piece is a bit tricky, and I had to do a few iterations of this to get it to go over the switch piece. And to be perfectly honest, I would make a couple of changes to this in the future, but they work okay for the switches I have now. We'll start off by creating a two-point rectangle, 14 millimeters by 14 millimeters. And here's a cool trick I learned just recently. If you don't use the point rectangle, you can create a line between two points, like I'm doing here with the square. If you right click on the line and toggle it to be a construction line, you can then hover in the center of the line and it will show you the center point. We can go ahead and add a point there now, which we can then use as our center point anytime we want to center another object to this square. Pretty nifty, huh? Let's move our square over to be in its final position. Unhide the bottom base and move the square over. Line it up near the center of the egg. It doesn't need to be perfect, but close to the center line is good. We're then going to hide the bodies again and extrude our square. We want it to be 9mm high. Let's rename it in the list so we know how to find it later. We're now going to line it up so that it's touching the top surface of the base. The better way to have done this is to have created the square sketch on the base surface initially, then extruding downwards. But hindsight is 2020, so now we need to move our square upwards so that it doesn't cut the bottom of the base, but rather the top. We'll move it a couple of meters up. I should have made the base a little thicker, but again, I'm showing you the technique rather than a one-to-one -one of what you should copy. As you can see, I can only move it 0.2 millimeters, which isn't nearly enough, but in the end, it worked out to be functional. Now let's do the cutout. Click the combine button, and as your target body, select the egg body. For your tool body, select the cube. Make sure cut is selected as the operation. You can take a look at the view to see where the subtraction is going to take place. Make sure it's correct. Uncheck Keep Tools, since we no longer need the cube after the base is cut out. After clicking OK, you can check out the base as a whole, as it's now been completed. Now we need to work on the top piece, the part that will hook onto the keyboard switch mechanism, a little piece that looks like a plus sign. To do that, we're going to create our own plus sign, surrounded by a square, then extrude the inside parts, creating a sort of hedge maze piece that will latch onto the switch. Let's hide the bottom base and make sure our square sketch is visible. We need to line up our plus sign enclosure with this square to make sure the top and bottom egg pieces align so that the switch bottom and switch top match up. Let's edit our sketch, and we're going to create two rectangles that will cross each other. We can use the point rectangle this time, so that we now know how to do the same thing in two ways. Our rectangles will be 1.4 by 4.4 and 4.4 by 1.4. Since we're creating point rectangles, we will then right click on one of them, click move, then choose point to point as the move type, which is one of the rectangle's center points as the origin and the other as the target. Then just select it, and just like that, they're centered together. Now we're going to move our cross over to the square. We can use the same method by centering the square and the cross by their center points. We use the same move command, and now we have everything where we need it to be. Easy. Finally, we're going to create a rectangle that just crosses the top and bottom of the vertical rectangle and has some space on the left and right of the horizontal rectangle. This will give us our arms that will hold the switch mechanism. Last but not least, we can select the little claws we just created and extrude them. We'll make the top body visible so we can see where we're working and extrude the claws by 8 millimeters. Let's turn on all the top bodies visible again and check our work. 
everything's been taken care of and it all looks correct. Not much else to do here except to export each piece separately. The way to do that is to hide or unhide the top and bottom pieces and export them respectively. After that, we're ready to head into Bamboo Studio and get our colors assigned. Here we are in Bamboo Studio and we'll do the usual actions. Let's import our two SDLs and begin assigning colors. Let's go into paint mode and assign the hard colors. Make sure you're in the paint bucket and edge detection is on. Then choose the color you want and click on the inside of each element. Once we're done with that, we can leave this mode and go back and check our results. After this, there's one change I want to make. I want to change the order of the filaments that are printed. I want to print the hearts first so I can get the most detail out of the print. This way the surrounding color is printed after the initial heart filament is laid down. That prevents the hearts from having to be laid inside the spacing left from the surrounding area. The way you get to that menu is by going to the settings icon on the plate. Why it's there, I have no idea. Seems like the worst place to have that setting. It should be by the filaments on the left pane. Anyway, you can drag the colors to rearrange them here. The last thing I want to do is change the quality settings. So I'm going to go for a 0.16 millimeter optimal setting to get the best quality I can get without this taking hours. Let's slice this and print. See you in a bit. And here we have our final results. I printed out another one as well since I wanted to try different color combinations. Hope you enjoyed the video. I would love it if you could subscribe and leave some comments about what you'd like to see next. I'm always looking for more fun projects to do. Until then, happy clicking.